News at Bedtime. This is the News at Bedtime with me, John Tweedledum. And me, Jim Tweedledee. Stories this bedtime. The crooked man defends himself against charges of fraud and corruption. I acted entirely within the rules. I may have made an error of judgment, but I am not and never have been crooked. Am I being paid for this? More on the crooked man later. But first, genetically modified beanstalks. Protesters have been demanding a ban on all GM crop trials, which have been making huge headlines in nursery land. And now a former dairy farmer turned bean entrepreneur has planted a new strain of bean with so-called magical properties. We go over to Mary Mary, our contrary correspondent, who's talking to Jack. No, I'm not, John. What I'm actually doing is I'm witnessing amazing scenes here at Jack's farm following the planting of the beans. The ground is shaking as the beanstalk shoots higher and higher into the sky. With me now is beanstalk grower Jack and also Jonathan Porridge, a spokesperson for Bean Peace, the anti-GM bean protest movement. So, Jonathan, what's your reaction? Well, we said all along that you shouldn't tamper with nature, and we were right. This is a giant beanstalk, the likes of which we've never seen before. For all we know, a giant could come out of the sky, climb down the beanstalk, and eat us all. Jack, if I could bring you in here. <laughs> I don't think that's uh, very likely. I can assure you, Mary Mary, that these beans have been developed by a very reputable and responsible stranger I met on the way to market. So how important is it to you that this crop trial should prove successful? How much money have you got invested in it? Well, no money as such. I exchanged the beans for cow. But in an ideal world, I am looking for a substantial return on this investment because my mother is not entirely happy with the nature of the transaction. He's a very stupid and lazy boy. Ow! Get off, Mum! A final word from Bean Peace. You can see these beans are already causing violence and physical injury. Back to you in the studio, John. Thank you, Mary Mary, our contrary correspondent, who'll be keeping us updated of any further developments. It is now four and a half months since the tragic death in Neverland of the 50-year-old little boy who never grew up, Peter Pan. At the time, there was a huge outpouring of grief, and here at News at Bedtime, we are celebrating this anniversary with a look back at his controversial life. Earlier this week... I flew over to Neverland to talk to his friends and fans. And do a bit of shopping, catch a show and hit the beach. Here in the hot climes of Bami Neverland, the fans keep a round-the-clock vigil. Some stand dressed as their hero, wearing green tights, others sporting the trademark hat with a feather. Excuse me, sir, how were you affected by Peter's death? Peter is not dead. He is alive and living with Elvis on the moon. To try to understand the real Peter Pan, I spoke to his long-term friend, Wendy Brokolevich, formerly Wendy Hackenbacker, formerly Wendy Burton, formerly Wendy Yamamoto, formerly Wendy Countess of saxe coburg formerly Wendy Burton again, and, of course, originally Wendy Darling, now 75. People do go on about Peter being a bit wacko, having cosmetic surgery on his shadow and that sort of thing. But hey, this is Neverland. This is where dreams come true. Sure. As for Peter hanging around nurseries and taking people's children, well, I think it's time to forget all that Lost Boys stuff and remember instead the pleasure he gave us all by flying around, fighting Captain Hook and moonwalking the plank. Are you married, Jim? Yeah, uh, to, my, to my job. You're not bad looking for a fat boy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like your cap. All right, that's a traditional Scottish hat. For the last word on Pan, I've tracked down his biggest fan who lives a solitary life away from the public. What did Peter mean to you? For me, Peter was a genius, an icon, a saint. I modelled my entire life on him. Hey, visiting time is over, Pied Piper. Come on. Peter Pan there, who died four and a half months ago. Nice tan, Jim. No doubt that explains this programme's budget cuts. Still time for some proper news rather than dumbed-down celebrity rubbernecking. With me now in the studio is the figure who's at the centre of the row over integrity in public life, the crooked man. 
I think you'll find it's the honest mistake man. Crooked man, can I ask you first about how you came into possession of the crooked sixpence? It's not a crooked sixpence, John. I found the sixpence quite by chance next to a style. A crooked style? No, it was my understanding that the style was a legitimate style and therefore I assumed that any money found in its vicinity was perfectly acceptable for me to claim as an allowance. Oh, come on. The style in question is only a crooked mile from your crooked home. Uh, no, that's your, not... Your crooked second home, to be precise. If, if you would let me finish... Your crooked second home that you live in with your crooked cat whilst claiming that you live elsewhere... I think it's very unfair to bring my cat into it. She's not here to defend herself, and besides, I am perfectly entitled to employ my cat to run my office, organise my diary and catch mice. Crooked mice. <laughs> this is just typical news at bedtime bias. You just can't accept that anyone isn't crooked. OK, so if you're not crooked... Why did you resign? I resigned, as you well know, to spend more time with my cat, who has been put under a lot of pressure by the media. In particular, the Daily Fairy Graph, which, as you know, is owned by the Brothers Grimm. The question remains, what happened to the sixpence? I intend to return the sixpence. I have it here, as you can see, and I think we should now move on and draw a line under the whole business. A crooked line? I'd like to know how much you are paid, Mr Tweedledum... It's a lot more than sixpence, isn't it? I, I think the people of Nurseryland would be interested to know just how many millions of sixpences keep you and Mr Tweedledee there in your fancy caps and breeches. Uh, thank you, Crooked Man. And you look as though you've had a few fat lunches on expenses. Yes, thank you, Crooked Man. That's all we've got time for. And what about your pension? And now it's the weather with Dilly 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 Dilly. What? Uh, oh. <clears throat> thank you, Jim. And the story is just rain, rain. I wish it would go away. And come again another day? Absolutely. So, if your children are planning on going up a hill to fetch a pail of water, parents should advise them to take extra care since it might prove slippery underfoot. Yes, we don't want any kiddies tumbling down and breaking their crowns, do we? Hang on, I'm just looking out the window and the sun has got his hat on. Hip, 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 hooray. Yes, the sun has got his hat on and he's coming out today. So, if your children are going up the hill to fetch a pail of water, do take extra care as the ground could be very hard. And that's your weather. Thanks to Dilly Dilly at the Meteorological Office. Not so much a weather update as a policy memorandum from the Health and Safety Executive. Someone got out of bed the wrong side this morning. Or were they kicked out by the latest squeeze? And in your case, it would be a squeeze. Oh! Uh, at least I can get out of bed without a drink. You just hit me with a rattle. What? Ow! Back to Mary Mary, our contrary correspondent at the giant GM beanstalk that won't stop growing. No, Jim, it has stopped growing and Jack has just returned from an exploratory climb. Jack, how was it? Oh, well, well, I'm very excited, Mary, because it's uh, quite clear that I am going to be very rich indeed. Can I bring in bean piece here? Mr Porridge? The reason Jack is going to be rich is because he's returned from the beanstalk with a goose that lays golden eggs and a singing harp, which are both freaks of nature and clearly indicative of the unnatural side effects of GM technology. Listen, that's the harp singing. Don't tell me that is normal for a harp, because it isn't. And don't tell me that you can eat that goose egg. It must be 24 karat gold. Jack, he's got a point, surely. No, what bean peas have totally ignored is the long-term benefits of the beanstalk to the developing world. A single bean, which is about the size of a piano, could feed a poor family for a month. Don't tell me you care about the poor, Jack. This is all about corporate greed at the expense of environmental vandalism. <laughs> There's another one. My Jack is a very clever boy. Leave him alone. Ow! This whole thing is turning into a pantomime, and not even a good one. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, and oh, with yes, the violence here escalating, I'm oh, handing you yes, back to the studio. Oh, oh yes, Jim. it is. Oh, no. And now, thought for the day with Peter Rabbi. Peter, this isn't going to be one of your depressing thoughts, is it? <laughs> of course not, Jim. But, you know, all this talk of golden eggs reminds me of a friend of my mother's, Jemima Puddle Duck. Now, Jemima was a lovely old thing, but not the brightest duck in the puddle. And she had some lovely eggs, which she was hatching. And one day, Mr Fox strolled by and offered to look after her eggs whilst she had a break. And you know what happened? Mr Fox ate all the eggs in a savage frenzy of carnal slaughter and infanticide. Which certainly makes you think, doesn't it? Isn't nature wonderful? Thanks, Peter, and now it's time for, for a drink. 
Oh, that's good. In a social way, now news of the return of the hit TV reality show starting next week on Channel 4, Knock on the Door. Yes, we're back! I'm Snow White and this is Small Brother, the show where seven random dwarves are shut up together in a cottage in the forest. It's day 15 in the Small Brother house and tensions are beginning to rise. Grumpy is grumpy with Dopey. Happy tries to act as peacemaker. I know, let's all whistle while we work. <gasps> I said shut it, you billy short ass. Happy isn't happy with Grumpy's attitude. He goes into the diary room. Grumpy is only picking on Dopey because he's got learning difficulties and that's not his fault, it's bullying. And I'm not allowed to sing or whistle. I just don't see why everyone can't be... Happy! <laughs> so, tune in next week for all the latest news and gossip on Small Brother 7. Well, I'll certainly be tuning in. John, are you a Small Brother fan? No, Jim, I've got a life. You've also got a big lump in your head. No, I haven't. Ow! You have now. So we seem to have lost John for a minute there, so let's have a time check. It's tick-tock, tick-tock, catch a squiddle in half a minute, grab a sack and stick a minute. Now, education. Oh, you're back. Thought you were a bit rattled there for a minute. Ow! And there's plenty more rattle where that came from. OK. That hot. Now, education. That was my bit. Education and the vexed issue of music lessons. Are there enough competent tutors and is the pressure on them too great? Joining me down the line is one such tutor. Hello, Jim. Tell me about the difficulties of being a tutor who toots a flute. Well, it's funny you should ask, because I try and tutor two tutors to toot, and the other day the two flute tutees said to me as their tutor, is it harder to toot or to tutor two tutors to toot? And is it? Well, I'm not sure. Fascinating. Thanks to the flute tutor who tutors two tutors to toot. And as far Sorry as to do... interrupt you, Jim, but we're going over live to Mary Mary, our contrary correspondent at the Beanstalk. All quiet, I gather. No, John, terrifying scenes here at Jack's Farm. Everything seemed fine, and then down the beanstalk came this enormous, frightening giant with a huge axe who is hungry for blood and determined to devour any human in his path. Bean Peace's worst fears have come true. Jack is attempting to cut down the beanstalk and bring the giant down with it. As I said, quite a lot of fuss about nothing. So, with the giant dead and the beanstalk chopped down, it could be a scene of devastation and tragedy, but luckily Jack's mother has turned out to be a man in women's clothing and has started a sing-along for all the boys and girls. Come on, boys and girls, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. This is Mary Mary if returning you, you to the studio. You know it, Just time to look at tomorrow's papers. The Nursery Times leads with Ali Baba held under new terrorism laws. The Daily Mirror Mirror on the wall asks, are exams too easy as Simple Simon gets 12 A stars and the Twinkle Twinkle Daily Star has naked pictures of Lady Godiva on her horse as it does every day. So, from me... John Tweedledum, good night and live happily ever after. I was going to say that. Too late, matey, you had your chance. Oh, this is me, Jim Tweedledee, saying good night. This is me, John Tweedledum, saying good night. This is beyond a joke. You've ruined my life. You have ruined my life. I hate you.